Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and is it time to revisit Dying Yarn with Dandelions? I'm not sure, but I do know that I want to start playing with some natural dyeing projects this spring, and there's no better time to get started. Last summer when I started playing with natural dyeing, I also started with dandelions, and I honestly had just missed the peak of where there were bloom everywhere. And I mean, there's a lot in just my backyard right now, so I, I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna do dandelions or if we're gonna do a different kind of flower, but I know that I wanna start setting up a cool mordanting bath. We are gonna be using an alum mordant today. Uh, in my dedicated dye stainless steel pot, I have 24 cups of water. And I want to start with pre-soaking 500 grams of yarn. So in the pot, we'll have 200 grams of wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, 200 grams of Knit Picks Stroll fingering weight yarn, and then 100 grams of Wool to Die For Platinum DK, which is also 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And the reason for having all of these is because there's a lot of different things that I wanna try with. Um, my lilacs have not yet started blooming, but I think that those could be fun. Uh, there's a lot of yellow flowers around right now that we could maybe try out. And so I figured while we're doing this, we may as well get as much set up as we can. Now, I was not a fan of the hot mortising method that I used last time. It took a really long time outside, and so I thought that I would do this cool vat and leave it for at least 48 hours, and that could work well. Now, right now in my pot, it's just water. That's it. Um, but mainly, I'm putting the yarn in now because I do want to pre-soak the yarn before we go ahead and get started. So I'm going to let the yarn soak in this water for, I think... 30 minutes. The other flower that has me going right now are my forsythia blossoms. I have two huge bushes on my property and they're nearing some of the end of their time and I thought that it could also be fun to play around with some of these yellow blossoms if I think I can't find quite enough dandelions yet. Here is a twig of my lilac. Uh, I have a number of huge lilac bushes. I've heard interesting things about maybe the bark. I do definitely need to prune them back every year, so when I do that, um, I hope to use some of the stems, but when the flowers come up in the next few weeks, or I guess the next month or so, that could be fun to play with as well. Oh, it's bright out. <laughs> Today is April 14th, and it's only going to get warmer, I hope, and nicer, and I thought that this spring is a good time to just slow things down. Mainly, because in part I don't have much of a choice, but it is a good opportunity for me to start playing with projects that have a longer time scale, where maybe we have steps that go 12, 18, 24 hours instead of things that are maybe 30 minutes. This might be easier to film because I can spend some time setting it up and come back at the same time the next day, which means I can take advantage of daily rest time and my more limited filming schedule. But, the timing is good in the sense that I wanted to revisit this. I wanted to catch some of these spring flowers this year. And I'm really excited to look at some of the colors that we can find in nature, in addition to some of the ones we can with commercial dyes. And so I hope you guys are excited as me. I could probably have more water in here. I don't know if things are a little too densely packed. Yeah, I'm removing the liquid from the yarn just to make it easier to put back in so it'll soak up some of that mordant water. Uh, once I go and start measuring out our alum mordant, and I'll go and put on gloves and get a respirator uh, to put on since it is a powder. So anyway, I am just gently squeezing out most of the water. Um, I'll be adding the yarn back in here, but that just seems easier to use the same water for the pre-soak and then the mordanting. That just seemed to make sense to me. I am now wearing my respirator. Uh, safety glasses and gloves. Now that I'm ready to weigh out our mordant, uh, it's a little windy so you can see the scale going a little bit, uh, but today we're going to use potassium aluminum sulfate, which is a common mordant, and I want to use about 10 to 15 percent of this alum as I do have for the yarn. So I want between 50 and 75 grams of our powder. 
and I am weighing it out. Uh, let's go for six. Okay, so we're at 65. I'm just going to call it at that. And now we want to dissolve this back into the dye bath. Now, the one time that I've played with this before, I did not do a cool vat. I did a warm vat. So we'll see how this dissolves in just cool or room temperature tap water. Uh, make sure when you're dealing with powders like this that you're working in a well ventilated area and that you are wearing some kind of respirator or mask. I wouldn't do this with like a cloth mask or bandana or anything like that. You really want to protect yourself from inhaling any of these particles. And for a second, I was like, wow, that like went in super fast. I think most of it's going into solution. I do see some here on the bottom center. So I'm just going to stir up until it is pretty well dissolved. I know I've already said this, but once again, everything I'm using here is dedicated for dye and is not used for food. Uh, and it only took about like a minute or so for all of that to dissolve. So that's not bad. I'm now going to add our yarn back in, and then we're gonna let this soak for almost two whole days uh, or more before we start playing with some other projects. Uh, last summer, I tried a lot of things, and some of these natural extracts gave dramatic results when we had our alum mordanted yarn in the mix, and other cases were a lot more subtle. It didn't make a massive dis difference with the dandelions and some of the other things we tried, but with some things like logwood, you needed the mordant to get that purple color, and with walnut, the results were way better without the mordant. Uh, black beans was one that I extracted myself, and having the mordant there gave us beautiful blues versus more of a gray. So these are things that seem to be dye and pigment specific, which if you think about it, it makes sense. <laughs> Uh, when you are extracting colored compounds from different plants, barks, things like that, they're different molecules and the chemistry of them is going to be different and they're going to behave differently. So a lot of this is going to come from trial and error and I hope that we are going to have a lot of fun with it. So initially, what, I was going to do this for a couple days and well, it's probably been a bit over a week. Thankfully, there's no scent or anything to the pot, so I think at this stage, we just need to go and rinse out the yarn. The biggest reason for the delay is the fact that I think my hot plate just isn't working. I tried something the other day and it just never got to a boil, so I am still waiting for the new one to arrive, but once that gets here, then we can try to get started. Okay, let's rinse our mordanted fiber. I am squeezing out the skeins and then putting them in some plain tap water. Okay, and now I'm not sure how much of a complete rinse is necessary. I think of the experiments I did last summer, I rinsed some of them towards the end, but I didn't rinse any of the beginning ones which was likely a mistake um, because by not rinsing um, that could have affected the results so yeah and the nice thing is that it's been cool enough outside that it's functionally like this has been refrigerated so I don't smell anything funky or fermented thank goodness it probably makes more sense to do this in like a big five gallon bucket or something. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> doing the best we can. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse this, you know, a few more times. And then we'll set aside the yarn to store it until we're ready to start dyeing. I'm not going to put the yarn through the spinning dryer or anything, but I am going to just gently squeeze it out and place it inside this plastic shoe box and then I think honestly I might stick it back in the garage I'm not planning on waiting weeks 
to use this up. Um, but I am waiting for that new hot plate to arrive. So hopefully we'll be able to start playing with this soon. I started picking dandelions at the right time this year. Believe it or not, all of this just came from my own yard. And I'm not sure how apparent it is, but check out that staining on my hands. The other hand, too. So, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna let these ones dry out, but then I'm gonna have to go around the neighborhood and see if I can get some more. Here are the mostly dried dandelions I picked last week. And then here are all the dandelions that I picked and then my husband and Lucas picked yesterday. This doesn't look like a lot, but I was picking dandelions for about an hour and a half. And there are handfuls upon handfuls upon handfuls of plant matter in here. If this is not enough to get pigment from dandelions, then we're probably not going to get very much pigment from dandelions. <laughs> I'm just going to say. I'll insert some pictures of my journey. There was like a little field that I completely cleared. And I have to say, I am exhausted. There are a lot more dandelions in theory I could gather, but the results of this are going to have to be pretty spectacular and pigmented for me to want to go on another epic <laughs> expedition. I am going to place the dandelion into, into some mesh bags to make it like a tea bag. I know that these mesh bags weigh 11 grams. So I have about 40 grams of dandelion for the ones that I picked about a week ago. I teared this uh, at the 51 grams that it was with that first batch. We'll see how much Keith and Lucas gathered. They gathered 180 grams of dandelions. Two heaping handfuls from my bag is all I wanted to add into this one. I'll add more into another. Uh-oh. It is not liking me trying to weigh this. Oh, lid. Okay, so I'm not sure. There's over 250 grams in here. The scale is struggling to weigh this bag, but there are at least 500 grams in here. And, and our second bag is just as big. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the OLED error is, but we get up to about 500 grams before the error shows up and I'm still supporting some of the weight. So I would confidently say that I think we have at least a kilogram of dandelions here. Certainly, and just for scale with my hands, there's a lot. <laughs> I've got a new two burner hot plate um, over here. I have my forsythia blossoms, which will be in a separate video. I added a couple of inches of some warm tap water, so that way we're not starting with cool water. Um, and I'm gonna add the dandelions. It's now, I just turned the heat on, so it's not warmer than hot tap water. And I am squeezing. So one of the perks of these bags is that we will be able to remove them eventually and all of that matter and all of those petals should stay in the bags, which will make the cleanup a lot easier. Um, and I'm just squeezing it to start. I will be coming in with a spoon and stirring as things heat up. And as I said, I'm gonna come in with some boiling water in a minute to heat, help things heat up. But uh, already I see some very uh, translucent liquid. I think that's probably a lot of pollen that's coming out. And well, we're gonna heat until we get to a boil, if we get to a boil. But it's already about 60 degrees outside, so fingers crossed. Okay, here's one kettle's worth of boiling water. Well, that's actually, okay, that's a lot of water. I mean, there's a lot of dandelions in there, but that's probably enough water. <laughs> uh, probably enough water. Uh, but now, at the very least, we can submerge our dandelions. And I would like this to come up to a boil for a little while. And so that's one of the reasons why we're starting with hot water just to help out the hot plate. But, uh, yeah, I'll come and I'll check in in a little while. It has been about an hour and we're at a boil. Ooh, that's hot. I'm so excited we are at a boil. Let's check on, whoa. We've got a lot of pigmentation. That is great. 
I'm actually going to remove the dandelions from now um, and set them into an aluminum pan. I'm going to do my best to safely uh, drain as much of the pigment as possible. The color in the pot looks almost brown, but it's definitely more yellow in what's leaking off the dandelions, and I'll definitely be adding that back to the pot uh, once it's cool enough to do so safely. We dyed yarn with dandelions before, and we looked at mordant versus no mordant on it. But today, we are just gonna look at mordants. Ooh, look at that color. Please come in the yarn, please. Uh, we're not really dip dyeing per se, but I'm adding this slowly and then we're going to come and stir it. So I just added 100 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn, which is 100% Peruvian Highland Wool. And then I added 100 grams of our Mordanted uh, Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Both of these were treated with an a la mordant uh, for about a week in like a cool vat type technique. And now uh, the pot is definitely still hot and sorry about the sunshine, everyone. Um, let's add in some of this extracted pigment. Okay, we'll add more as time goes on, but I do wanna cover this back up. But before we do, I mean, it might be hard to see with the shadows and the steam, but there's a lot of pigment in here, so I'm very optimistic. All right, I'm now going to cover things up, and we're going to let this simmer for about an hour. Eek, I'm so excited. It's been an hour, so I'm now going to turn off the heat and unplug this hot plate. It has worked beautifully, and I'm really, really happy with it, especially because, look, we had a simmer. And... The lid, especially since we did hit a simmer. This is a bit of a dirty, dusty yellow color. Uh, I am intrigued. Uh, and there's still a fair, amount, a fair amount of pigment in the pot. I wonder if one of the things that's making the color a bit more dirty is the fact that uh, when we're boiling our dandelions, there's also a lot of green in there. There's those stems. Uh, I didn't go and like pluck the petals out of the plant. So anyway, the heat is off. I am going to let this cool completely in the pot, potentially even overnight. Uh, since it's an electric hot plate, it's going to take a long time to cool off. Uh, but so that should remain with some sustained heat for a while. It's the next evening, so about 36 hours later. Everything now is cool and we are going to go and drain the liquid, which definitely still has pigment in it. It didn't clear, we didn't expect it to, um, but we're gonna drain the liquid and go inside to wash the yarn. The color we got from the dandelions is not super surprising. Uh, this is sort of a brownish, greenish, yellow color on both our non-superwash and our superwash wool. This is a more intense color of what I got the first time that we dyed with dandelions. Uh, I do wonder if we did not have uh, so much of the greenery, if I took the time to separate out the petals, if we would have gotten a more clear yellow. Nevertheless, the color is lovely. Now that we're at the washing stage and I am going to add some clear dish soap, uh, I'm washing with cold water. We will add soap multiple times, but the thing to be concerned about now is felting because as you manipulate your yarn and your fiber a lot, there's just that risk. The good news is that there's not plant matter in here. So that is really good, but I am expecting to see bleeding for a while. So I am going to do a number of rinses here and yeah, I'll pop back in when it looks like things are a little bit more clear. All right, it has not been that long and there's like a hint of some color left in there, but 
I am pretty satisfied. This was not bad. Not bad at all. Uh, I think, well, certainly on the camera monitor, it's looking more brown. There's definitely more yellow to it. Um, but now I'm going to put this through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry dandelion yarn. And we got a lot of pigment, but we also had a ton. Well, not literally, but we had handfuls and handfuls of dandelion that went into this yarn. I did not do a mordant versus no mordant for today's video because we did that last summer and saw maybe a hair of a difference using the mordant, but today we use both Knit Pick Stroll, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and Wool of the Andes, which is 100% Peruvian Highland Wool. And we use both of these that were treated in a Cool That Alum Mordant. I know that our Cool That Alum Mordant worked fantastically because in another video, I do have a Mordant versus no Mordant comparison. And since there was a big difference in that video, uh, therefore we know that it did work well. Both of these I would classify as a semi-solid. I do feel like we've got tonal variation in here. It's just really, really subtle. And consistent with what we've seen in the past, the superwash yarn is more pigmented. A hair more. It's definitely more pigmented. Now, I would classify these colors as a dirty yellow. It's sort of verging on green, or maybe a little bit of brown, versus being a true yellow. And right now, they actually look pretty yellow on camera until I bring in something that is a brighter yellow. This skein of yarn right here is Wool of the Andes that I dyed with Forsythia. The yellow is more of a mustard yellow. It is brighter and feels, well, cleaner. And honestly, because of the effort between the two of the gathering the flowers and that process, Hands down, the Forsythia is the winner. It was a lot easier to harvest the blossoms, and I personally prefer the color. Now, one other difference is that with the dandelion, there was greenery in there. There were stems, there's more greenery from around the blossoms themselves, and with the Forsythia, there was less greenery in there. So potentially, after harvesting the dandelions, if I took the time to pluck the petals out so the rest of the stem wasn't present, that might help us get a more pure color and get a more pure yellow versus this color that feels like a little dirtier. And the difference is subtle. I'm not sure if it's even coming through on camera, uh, but it's definitely true. And here is a superwash uh, with mordant. And again, just the, they're more, they feel more mustard. They feel less green. I am really happy with how this project turned out. And well, I guess I'm especially thrilled that even though I harvested this whole field, uh, it really didn't make a big difference in the number of blossoms. So there were plenty for the bees that opened up the very next day. It was almost as though I had not been there at all. I'm not saying that I'll never try dyeing yarn with dandelions again, but I was definitely physically exhausted after gathering it. And oh man, it's interesting because they were a lot more moist. The forsythia flowers, even like in the pile, they dried out really well and I would have to make a big effort to spread the dandelions out more. But I definitely want to explore more flowers and when my lilacs finally bloom, right now it is mid-May and they have not started blooming yet, but when the lilacs do bloom, I plan to harvest some of those blossoms to give it a shot. And I'm not sure if it's going to come through, but in here, the superwash, you can see a bit more of some of this tonal variation, but it is super, super subtle. And I think you have to knit or crochet with it to really be sure that it's there versus being a reflection of the light. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and don't forget to subscribe, like, turn on notifications and leave a comment below to let me know what you would like to see in the future. I keep track of all of your suggestions that you leave in the comments and questions and frequently pull video ideas from that list. So thank you so much for all of your feedback and suggestions. If you love the content that I'm creating and the yarn that I dye, you can actually purchase the yarn featured in these videos through the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Uh, almost all of the yarn that I dye ends up going through the shop and it's a great way for you to support the content here on the channel and get some beautiful yarn at the same time. 
There will be a link to my Etsy shop in both the video description and in the iCard, which is on the top right hand corner of your screen. Am I waiting for dandelions to bloom next spring so I can harvest them for dyeing? Not necessarily, but I'm also open to it because, well, having a dandelion walk was ultimately fun, even if it was exhausting. I am hoping to plant some flowers that I can harvest for some more natural dyeing videos this year or maybe even next year if I'm gonna have to take a few years to harvest enough material. Uh, if anything, the sheer volume of plant matter that I use should speak volumes. If you want something that is more than a light wash of color when it comes to natural dyeing, you're gonna need a lot of material. Uh, so it's just worth keeping that in mind as you are planning projects or gardens and things like that. I really hope you enjoyed this journey in dyeing yarn with dandelions. My family actually loves dandelions. We even have a dandelion print on some pillows in our living room. And I don't know, they remind us of our dog and we just have an, aff an affection for them. <laughs> I know some people think that they're a weed and go to war with them every year, but we actually really like them. So this was pretty fun to create. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.